does not support or endorse the views espoused by their guests, past, present, and future. Wilmot does not endorse the current government in Afghanistan. Wilmot is not linked to the current government in Afghanistan. If anything said in this video gets either party in trouble, it is fake and satire. Yeah. This recording, this recording, this recording. Four, three, two, one. Uh, Welcome back. Hope you get lung cancer. <laughs> I believe before the break we were talking about your sex life. As you uh, do, yeah, that's solid. I no wanted sex to life. Uh, divulge into that to make sure you're not a sex tourist. No, I, d I have not had sex in... How long ago was two, 2020? Or about four years now? God damn. Yeah, man. It was just, you know, I I'm didn't want a bald and bankrupt situation. No, I'm not a sex tourist, man. I haven't been to East Asia. I'm not a libertarian, unfortunately for myself. It's very hard. Solid, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a libertarian. <laughs> Oh yeah, about your your Africa trip. You hung out with the people of uh, Wakaliwood. They yeah, made... Wakaliwood, South Sudan, all all of East Africa, man. It was cool. Yeah, were they were they shooting Who Killed Captain Alex too? Yes, man. Oh, they're still doing it. I think so. It's I'm been not too years. sure. I, yeah, to be fair, they've just kind of started. They've finished the helicopter as well. They've got some good funding. They're doing some solid work. I love those guys. That's good. Did you make? Did you get to make like a cameo? Or? Yeah, yeah. My name's on. Yeah, exactly. Um, I made a cameo. Can't reveal it though. And um, it'll be it'll be in the movie, Big If True, and I'm on the wall. I got my name put there as an honorary member, so it's lovely stuff. Plus, you actually have a hotel too, so you can stay at Rock Hollywood if you wanted for a few bucks a night. Oh. Uh, Wait, what about North Sentinel Island? Oh, North Sentinel. You want to go to North Sentinel Island? Of course, you would be the best. It's illegal. Yeah, so there's so there's many things. So it's having the <laughs> table, the bloody hell, the humor. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, I mean, you got CCCP on there. Why don't you see some bitches? You know, you got none. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you're kind of libertarian, so I think you're kind of into that CP stuff. You know, he's into CP, not CCCP. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to go to North Sentinel Island? Yeah, man. Well, so, it's solid. It's a solid plan. Nothing could go wrong. 100%. It's a solid idea. I do not have to... You're going to gonna get caught. Oh, thank God, man. I can finally rest. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll, I'll go there. There's two options. Either I basically go as Iron Man. As in, like, I wear a suit of medieval armor that's been crafted specifically to fit my body. And that stuff's really flexible. Uh, it, it shows you come in peace. They're not going to be threatened at all. Well, to be fair, if they threw arrows at me, we did some tests with some material. No joke, I got a material scientist from uni. <laughs> we did some scientific experiments with sheet metal, different materials, and we actually constructed from research what the bow and arrow might actually be on North Central Island added about 20% of the force to check hey would it actually penetrate you know just as an uncertainty and we shot the arrow at this material and obviously it didn't dent it very very small dents like you know it will not cause any problems so if you go to North Central Island they can't hit you with any arrows and if I have some pepper spray you know I can work in self-defense and I need to give them the COVID vaccine mate I need to go there to vaccinate them they're probably sitting there like Really would. They're social isolating. They've been social isolating for years, man. Don't you think... Well, you wouldn't be going alone, I don't alone, think. Obviously. Clearly not, mate. I don't think. <laughs> you wouldn't be going alone, obviously. Don't you think you'd be putting other people's lives at risk? They're, I'm not kidnapping. They're volunteering to go, They're man. Honestly, I've got a few media companies that are like, we want to make a documentary and make this happen. Oh, my God. I'm literally saying, hey, this is going to be my last ever trip because if the, if the Indians try to extradite me, I don't think the British government's going to go, no, nah, we need to protect morals. I'm like, yeah, just get, get morals out of here, man. I, I will just, this will be my last ever trip. I will have to go into hiding. But it's not for, I don't do this for money. I only do it for the money so I can afford the bigger trips. You see what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's only for means to an end. I'm never going to drive a Lamborghini or some bullshit. I just want to yeah. goof off and go down to history books as the greatest British adventurer. Uh... North Central Island, so there's another way of doing it. If you go in the suit of armor, no one can touch you. You're basically just a tank driving in. You keep away from them. You film the whole thing. You go to the center of the island, which no one has documented. And you kind of dig around, take some photos, do some audio recordings, uh, maybe trade one bow for another. So if I give them a nice compound bow from Amazon, get their bow, that's my retirement plan. I don't have, I don't invest in the S&P 500. I'm not exactly, uh, you know, setting up rough IRAs. Yeah. I, I'm going to sell that bow on eBay for a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like that's history. Yeah, I might try and get them to sign it if they invent writing. Um, there's also been stories of people have made friendly contacts with the North Sentinelese. So there was one geezer in the seventies who would go to the island every week, do some funny Fortnite dance, uh, dress in some local attire, throw them a few coconuts on the shore, and every few, every single week they would get closer and closer. And the North Sentinelese like this guy's alright. He gives us coconuts because they don't they're not native to the island, but they wash up sometimes very rarely. So it's uh it's very nice, you know. It's it's a very sweet thing they have that they have a concept of. So at one point he actually managed to get on the island and meet them, 
only issue was he one day took a break to a different country, had a heart attack and died. So unfortunately, he never really got to finish his work. One time in the late 90s, the Indian government actually went there and made contact on their first attempt. Did like a funny fortnight down some coconuts. They got local um, p people, natives from the other islands that were contacted to shout certain words at these people. And I think maybe they understood. Like there was some language that diverted. And I think some words were understood. And also they went with a woman. And the woman was seen as kind of a, oh, we come here in peace, you know, because he wouldn't bring women to war. That's why when the North Centralese come onto the island, it's only the men. They have a very uh, hierarchical, hierarchical thing that goes on. Yeah, it shows you're not like a war band. Yeah, exactly. If you just go there with funny coconuts, do your funny little dance, have a have a uh, nice girlfriend there or whatever, they're like, yeah, this guy's chill. And there was photos of the Indian government just taking photos and chilling with them and shaking their hands, which, you know, from a... Uh, uh, perspective of your work as well. I don't think that's great for uh, you know diseases and stuff. But there are certain ways where you can absolutely minimise or even fully present disease spreading. Uh, everyone says you go there, you go kill them from diseases. Absolutely not. There's, there's absolutely ways to do that. That's why that's how people are contacting nowadays in the Amazon and stuff. There's always protocols and ways around that, which you could easily carry out. Um, I want to go there, go into the island, find find all the stuff. Uh, but the British actually left there, so the British made contact 200 years ago and gifted them a bunch of gold and stuff. I want to do a trade, so I'll give them like a Big Mac or something in exchange for the gold, and I think it'll be a solid offer, you know. So, what's, uh, what's porn like in Afghanistan? I didn't personally watch it, I don't like porn, I believe it's the uh, fall of Western civilization. If I, if I learned about someone watching porn, I'd say you're, you're just cocked, mate, life is so over, kill yourself. You hear that, um, Luke? You watch porn, Luke? No. Kill yourself, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, just get 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 a wife. Get a wife. Don't watch porn with bills in it. That's fine. We'll speak afterwards. Connect with me. You'll message me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. So uh, with Taliban, they don't watch porn, though. Mm. Just that, but. <laughs> You ever get offered hashish in Afghanistan? I got offered, mate. One of the commanders said, want to smoke up? The English is like, we got this thing called hash, you know, hashish, yeah. do you want some? I was like, nah, I'm good, man, I'm good. But I was, I was so tempted, mate. I want to smoke up the Taliban. I've never actually done any drugs in my life. No joke. I don't drink. I don't smoke. The first time I smoked was with Andrew Tay a few days ago, just because I thought it'd be fun, man. <laughs> just funny. You want a cigarette now? Nah, I'm good, man. No, you're not going to get me addicted. I, <laughs> just, I don't have an urge to do this again. It was like an okay situation, but it uh, wasn't... Really? Top G said I could smoke, maybe it's alright. Maybe I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be fine. No, I'm not gonna smoke, mate. I mean, you got terrible gums, man. I mean, you're smoking. Yeah, you're a chain smoker, for sure. Yeah. But um, with me, I've got these pearly British whites where they're only crooked and slightly yellow and it's brown, so really good British teeth, you know. Yeah, the Taliban were like, hey, if you want to smoke it up, no problem. And I was like, I'm tempted, but nah. nah. I'd totally accept that offer. Yeah, man. I actually kind of would at one point. I had one American YouTuber, can't name him, but he's over a million subscribers. He wanted to go to Afghanistan. I was like, yeah, well, why do you want to go? You want to film a, a video? He's a, he does political commentaries, so he's not actually, you know, a travel YouTuber. He said, I just want to smoke hash. Oh. I'm like, fair enough, mate. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Um, Who is he on the down? I can't say. I'll tell you. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, afterwards. Yeah, it's called, um, I, I believe he's quite big. He's called, um, he's called Mr. Beast or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's definitely not Mr. Beast. Please don't sue me, Mr. Beast. I know he watches you, yeah. Mr. Beast watches me. Big if true, you know. Oh my god, yeah. I hope he's seen my rap. I believe, uh, there's one more thing we have to talk about, and, uh, we'd like to talk about the other prisoners that were with you in Afghanistan. Yeah, sure. Well, the British prisoners were in a different area because they were suspected feds. But there were some people that were less, of, less prisoners. So, sometimes there were some Afghan actual CIA people, and I say that because they would come into the house, they would walk up to me and just go, Piss man, I'm, I'm, I'm CIA, what are you? And I'll be like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bloody spy. And they'll be like, oh, that's good man, you keep it going, but they will find out. Oh I'm like, God. what? And I thought, you know, they might be feds, uh, they might be Taliban trying to figure out who I am, but no joke, they actually uh, were genuine spies. Like, I met so many CIA people, um, met some KGB as well. And you know, the Afghans, they get paid like, what, $400 a month to basically risk their lives getting fed information? It's not worth it, man. So there are CIA in, in Afghanistan, I met them. So I've met ISIS, met Taliban, met CIA. 
as you do. Uh, the other prisoners too, so there was one guy, oh, you would love this story, absolute schizophrenic, big six foot six black dude, American guy, I can't reveal any more details, but he runs, I was spending one day in the holding cell before I went to the, uh, you know, the guest house. This guy walks in and I'm like, oh crap, yeah, another English speaker, I get to speak to him, hey man, why are you in? Yeah, fuck white people, why the fuck are you talking to me, man? Fuck you, you are the enemy, you are the, you are the, uh, no, you're not, you're not the Muslim, I'm a Muslim, I'm a terrorist, I'm ISIS, I'll fucking kill you, I'm like, oh shit, fucking hell, what's this guy's problem? And he starts threatening, the Taliban come in, like, what, what's the problem? And I say, hey, this guy's bloody crazy, he's not shouting at the Taliban, like, I'm a terrorist, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you! The Taliban have to restrain him after he punches one of the Taliban guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he's like, this guy's full on schizophrenic, claims to be Muslim. And the Taliban are like, yeah, that's good, man, you're Muslim, very good to see, you know, but why did you come here? He's like, I want to join ISIS. And they're like, that's a big problem here, we don't support that stuff. He goes, oh, I want to join the Taliban too. And they go, where were you where, when uh, you know, the war was going on? Why did you come beforehand? You're like, what, 30 years old, 4 years old? And he goes, uh, uh, I was busy. And I was like, this fucking guy, you know. And he said, okay, well, you're Muslim, man, uh, can you start something from the Quran for us? He couldn't. He'd probably be Muslim in 10 years, could not recite a single verse from the holy book. Oh. He can say some stuff about uh, stuff, and he didn't have a beard as well, either. he had loads of facial hair. Um, yeah, I don't know what he was doing, he told them he was, he was American Mujahideen. But Taliban were like, there are no American Mujahideen, what are you talking about? And the girl was like, no, it's me, it's me. And I, I was allowed to speak to him just to see the interaction, I imagine. And I say, hey, hey, man, how you doing? How are you holding up? This is a few months in. And he goes, really good, man. But Joe Biden, man, he talk, he's talking to me through the chip at the end of my penis and in my head. And I'm there like, I'm just, my face is just like, <laughs> all right, mate. And he goes, yeah, Joe Biden, when I was in America, when I was serving in Iraq, they put the chip in my brain at the end of my knob. And then, you know, they, they, they like, do the experiments and they attack me with waves, with, with, with satellites and shit. And I'm like... This is the worst US asset I've ever met, mate. <laughs> I think this guy's either schizophrenic or just full on like schizo maxing. He's just schizo posting in real life. He he pretended. Uh, he told me he was, uh, was it uh, Michael Jackson's long lost son? Was he? I don't think so, man. It, it doesn't doesn't look like that. He wasn't white as well, so it's like you know. Well, Michael Jackson wasn't. He is white, man. Must be fair. Yeah, that's kind of that's Do kind you think of. Michael fair. Jackson earned it. But anyway, um, he believed he was Michael Jackson's long lost son. He believed the US government was sending satellite beams to hurt him, like gang stalking and all this schizo stuff. Um, which I, I thought it was too perfect, you know, I was a bit suspicious. But then I realised he was talking to himself for, uh, you know, week, hours a day for months at a time. And I'm thinking, you know, if only an insane person could do that. Uh, but Taliban were trying to understand him. Uh, you know, what, what's he doing here? It turns out he tr also tried to marry a five-year-old girl in Afghanistan by paying dowry, you know, paying for the marriage. And he went to me, he was like, uh, I wasn't going to have sex with her, man. I was just doing it for the passport, for the uh, citizenship. You can uh, and he was like darting his eyes around, like he was sweating, like, don't have sex with her, man, not going to do it. Uh, so, and I, I went, hey, okay, okay. Uh, have you been to prison before? Yeah, man, in uh, Thailand. I was like, what are we doing there? He was like... Oh, uh, I wasn't going to have sex with any children, man. And I was like, did you go to prison in Thailand for, like, being a paedophile? And he was, like, sweating your bullets. And like, oh! I'm like, this guy's so retarded. He's like, yeah. So he's just, you know, the Taliban were trying to be kind to him, too. They were like, hey, man, do you want to go in a nicer room? Uh, if we want, we can get your laptop for you. You can watch some movies and stuff, you know. You, you know, we don't know. We haven't really been concrete with the whole spy thing, so we're just trying to figure out things with you. And they told me, yeah, he's mentally ill. We're all big on the mental health stuff over here. They actually are, to be fair. Oh. So we want to make sure you actually, you know, got something for entertainment beyond these books. I'm sure these books are getting a little bit boring for you. You've read them a few times. You know, if you have a laptop, we get you movies. He was like, no, I am Muslim. I will not watch movies. It's like, yeah, but we can get you the Quran on the book, you know, English version of the Quran. Uh, you know, we can get you some Muslim movies. He was like, no! I will pray to I will pray to God and nothing else. And he just sat in a room all day doing nothing. And the Taliban were like, this guy's crazy, isn't he? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's a This guy's like, hardcore. Yeah, it's like, this guy's solid, you know. And he goes, as well, he went, he met the top commander. He wouldn't call the commander by his name, even after I told him, like, the guy's name, like, 15 times. And he goes, Taliban commander, I do not want to leave Afghanistan. I cannot go to America. I cannot. They will kill me. I'm a top terrorist. He believed he was part of a big terrorist network. He believed he was going to orchestrate another 9-11 on the Burj Khalifa. 
He also believed if he put this on his Facebook, and I've seen his Facebook, it's public, it's messed up. He's tweeting, so he's posting on Facebook, like, uh, all, all American, all American Mujahideen action go, we are attacking uh, at this time. And obviously it never happens. <laughs> and so he's just, like, he's full on loopy, like, his brain is, yeah. He's, he's lost it, man. The Taliban are like, he's a real piece of work. I'm like, yeah. And he, every time I would try and help you, I'd be like, hey, hey, man, I got some money on me. Do you want me to go get you a Pepsi from, from the bazaar, from the market? You know, you want something nice, man? He was like, fuck you, man. You're white trash. What are you doing? I'm like, mate, I'm I'm close to friends with the Taliban. And, you know, what, 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 what are you doing, man? What, what's up? He was saying, yeah, I want to be deported. I don't want to be deported. I want to stay in Afghanistan. And the Taliban were like, yeah, no problem. They turned to me and they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's too extreme for them. And obviously, you try to join ISIS. That's a real terrorist organization. The Taliban don't like that, of course, because yeah. they're against ISIS. So he's just, this guy's just kind of retarded. Like, I don't can relate to being retarded, but he's just on another level, man. He needs serious help and serious meds. I beg you, let me hold the stack, you know? Just to let me feel the money. Okay. One more time. Why is there a woman in this house? <laughs> what? <laughs> you cover, up, cover up your face, you whore. Thank God. Oh. Oh, this is what Taliban. This is what Taliban merch can buy you. Buy my course or something. Can you look straight at the camera and uh, say, uh, "I made Geopold." I made Geopold. I, I made Geopold. I made Geopold. You oh. made Geopold. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck it, good enough. <laughs> Is there any final things you want to say to the camera? Help me. <laughs> They're keeping me here against my will. I don't even know this Mao guy. Thank you very much for watching this very special episode of The Wild Mao Show. Please follow me on Twitter. I, I'm desperate for money. I, I, please buy my book. Please follow him too. He, he, needs, he needs to afford stuff. He lives in a crack den. <laughs> like. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Uh,